What is going on, Tigers? This is Jacob filling in for Tom. Let's do a little card room right now. So, in love, there are no conditions. You love for no reason with no justification. You are free to be what you are, and you allow others to be what they are. And again, that's a beautiful thing, guys. All right, so the market gone off to a rough start today. We're kind of crawling back uh, in the Dow, um, in the S&P, the NDX. Today, um, obviously, the big talk um, are around the banks. There's a lot of interesting things going on. We'll do just a quick recap of what happened with SVB and if there's maybe some other kind of toxic things um, within bank compositions. Um, we'll talk about uh, the potential for steel uh, to be pretty good in the future here. Um, and just some like minor adjustments going on um, <clears throat> at large companies. So, you know, to begin, we can look at um, Walmart here has laid off quite a few of their employees. Um, Walmart's uh, shrinking their e-commerce facilities across the con uh, country uh, as the big box giant and other retailers brace for a tougher year ahead. Um, this is kind of seeing what the Fed has is, is wanted a little bit, right? Like lowering employment. Now, employment numbers are still pretty strong, um, but you can see uh, companies starting to hurt. Even companies of this kind of size are really reducing down. Um, it, it seems like in, when we go a little bit later, um, when we look at some of the banks um, and kind of their acquisitions throughout 2020, it seems like across the board, everyone kind of used this, uh, I suppose, extra money that they got and, and really bloated themselves up quite a bit. I think that's the case for a lot of um, employment numbers, um, and we'll certainly see it the case uh, as the case in things like mortgage-backed securities, which we'll get to later. Uh, so Walmart's e-commerce rival, Amazon, announced 9,000 job cuts on Monday following 18,000 layoffs in January. Uh, Amazon has also uh, closed, canceled, and delayed the opening of new warehouses um, as some online sales shifted back to stores. Uh, stores. Let's see here. Yeah, so I mean, you know, not a lot of like movement here whatsoever. Let's do it on weekly. Well, let's do it this way. Let's see. So I mean, nothing, nothing like too extreme for it. I, I think this cutting down um, of employment is going to be pretty good for the company. When when you get to hard times, uh, it's just trimming the, you know, you're talking about people here, you know, you don't say like it this way particularly, but you, know, you got to trim down on some of the expenses essentially, right? Especially when things get a little tougher. Um, the company confirmed, this is Walmart now, the company confirmed to Reuters uh, that it is eliminating hundreds of jobs at five fulfillment centers, um, told Reuters is reducing its workforce because of reduction or elimination in evening and weekend shifts. Um, so it's pretty yeah, it's a big it's a big move for them. Walmart anticipates slower sales growth and lower profits in the coming fiscal year. Uh, the company said last month that it expects same store sales for its U.S. business to grow between two percent and two point five percent. That's excluding fuel. Uh, that compares to six point six percent growth in the previous fiscal year. Uh, the company expects adjusted earnings per share to range from five ninety uh, to six zero five again, excluding fuel, um, for the fiscal year. And that's lower than the adjusted earnings per share of 629 for the past fiscal year. Online sales have continued to grow, though at a slower pace than during the peak of the pandemic. Um, E-commerce sales for Walmart's U.S. business rose 12% in the most recent fiscal year, uh, which ended January 31st. Um, and that compares to 11% growth in fiscal year 2022 and 79% in 2021. Um, and other kind of like, you know, small news like this, um, Apple is getting into the movie business. Let's see where we go going here. So um, this also led to a lot of cinema stocks jumping quite a bit. Um, a Apple usually releases films uh, directly to um, different streaming platforms. Um, so it seems like they might be going for, like, a big box office hit now, which is, you know, um, I'm sure there's probably, I would say, less fees running it like that. Um, also, just expanding its market share into different kind, well, into different markets, essentially, right? Um, it's a pretty good idea. Uh, cinema stocks also jumped 
um, Thursday after a report uh, that said Apple's plans to spend $1 billion on this. I feel bad kind of for the AMC uh, apes, as they call themselves. Um, they, you know, I have this guy I know, um, he works at one of the restaurants I, I go to. Um, he got in AMC at, I, I don't even know, like 20 bucks or something like that. And the thing has just continued uh, uh, to lose value. It, again, with these kind of like meme stocks, I mean, we all know this, but there's, you know, not a lot of real value in them holding them long term. I'm sure they could be vehicles for crazy gains if you time it correctly. Um, but I mean, it doesn't even seem like we had anything. You know, let's see here. I mean, how big of a move really is that? So yeah, I mean, this is just a bad, obviously toxic stock to hold. I think these guys are really, and regardless, regardless, the um, these companies kind of jumped a little bit on that. Um, again, Amazon made a similar commitment last November, promising to make between 12 and 15 movies for the movie theaters each year. Um, Bloomberg's report indicated that Martin Scorsese's crime thriller and a bunch of other ones from Ridley Scott as well um, are on the short list for longer theatrical runs. Um, anyways, I, I think what we're seeing is kind of like a big rebound again into cinema. Um, it was weird. I, I mean, you know, I can speak a lot again for, for my age group. Uh, we going to movies was kind of not really something you did. We we loved being able to stay in, but I think with the pandemic, um, we realized how <laughs> you know you don't um, know what you have until it's gone. I suppose, right? Um, so, give me a second here. So I think we're going to see a lot of rebound in this. But uh, regarding, you know, the cinema stocks themselves, probably, probably nothing big on that. Um, when we get back, um, we'll talk a little bit about Hindenburg. Um, they released a uh, pretty scathing report on, on Block and its CEO, Jack. Um, a lot of the report itself, I, I read it all yesterday. Um, there are some things in it that are valid. I think a lot of other things kind of make it look a little bit like a hit piece. Um, I'm not saying that's what it was, but there are qualities to it. So we'll kind of parse through uh, the positives and the negatives of that report and kind of see what happens with that. And folks, stay tuned because we'll be right back.